Oh my god, another live because uh, clearly Instagram is really uh, quite a, quite a one challenge. Hi. <laughs> Back again. Back again. Hopefully this time the things are going to start working. Okay. So let's just bear with us. Yes, hi. Did you join the live? Uh Yes, I think this is going to work. Uh, let's hope, let's hope. And let's try. Um, hi, Duty. Hi. Yeah, I was just sitting and waving to everybody here because that's all we can do right now. Because <laughs> our guest out. in our coordination with the Instagram. Anyway, but like let's let's also talk a little bit about uh, you know what is really happening at least in India with the space for micro micro uh, materials. You know, so a lot of people are trying to do this, but I think since there are no established protocols and like that's the IP, right? The whole IP is in how the process parameters, how long you let it colonize for, what the temperature, which strains you want to use. So all of that stuff is not really like. Uh, easily available for the common people and that's sort of what makes this like difficult to access as well because it's not the same thing as growing mushrooms like micro materials have their own different challenges that are not the same as uh, the cultivation of mushrooms so how to separate the hype from the promise hi Shanoi so uh, again this is a question that I think best Sharad answers Sharad answers but I'll still try to answer it with whatever little knowledge that I have about uh, micro materials. So I think the biggest challenge is going to be cost and scalability because like, we have to accept the fact that the kind of scale that plastics are being produced, a polymer, petroleum based polymers are being produced. It makes it really, really difficult for an, a new and coming upcoming company to replace all their plastic with micro materials uh, like overnight because it's a very, very large cost. Plastics are up, sadly the best bet that we have until the time that I think that this uh, material doesn't become commercially viable. The adoption is going to stay limited to luxury goods or companies that can actually afford this. So cost is a really, really big factor. And also things like contamination rate, the kind of risk that you bring in with making this material. So it's a more expensive and more technical process because you're literally growing this, right? So I think those those are the challenges, the commercial viability of the same and the whole process about how technical it is as compared to like petroleum based polymers. Some people say that mushrooms feel a little pain compared to other plants. Is that true? So the question I want to ask you is like, what is pain? Isn't pain a very human or like animal way of looking at a sensation? Because pain for a plant might be completely something else, right? Like, and we don't have the, we always view the world through a very anthropocentric lens of, you know, human beings and like, we, this is our world and like how we look at it. So the question is kind of difficult to answer because what is pain? Pain is, is, is our body telling us that something's wrong, right? And that's just us. And we have a really fast reaction to it. And we are, it's an external reaction. And it's very easy, easy for people to perceive that something's up. But for maybe a plant or a fungus, it might not be that, like way. that way, right? You know. So difficult question to answer. But also the logic that we probably applied is that uh, fungi are more closely related to us than they are to plants. So do they f have more chance of feeling pain than plants? Again, like I'm not sure. It's, it's a very difficult question to answer. I think even for any experienced researcher, because what is pain? It's just the sensation then. It's a hu very human and animal sensation. So we'll have to look at that. Hmm. I like that you answered it from a very, uh, you know, uh, non-anthropocentric lens because I think a lot of the times we always look at, uh, you know, the views in that way. Anyway, let's get back to micro materials. Um, although I don't think, uh, I mean, I think there are some issues. Yeah, with... Sharad is going to be joining us really soon. So our teammate is trying, Just to, trying to fix that. But... So in the meantime, again, like we'll talk about why we are doing this talk yeah. in the first place. It's because 
over the last month finally after covid we've reopened uh, bangalore slowly slowly events have started happening and we met a lot of really fascinating people who wanted to know more about micro materials and what they are and how to go about doing it and we just felt that uh, sharad is the best person to answer that because he's been in the space and i also see that he's part of so many online communities where he's helped so many people like get into the space by giving them the right guidance and pointing them the right guy uh, direction and he is so approachable so for all the amazing work that he has been doing in the forums i was just sitting and watching in the sidelines and then finally we spoke and then he was more than happy to share it with the the new vedo circle as well so we're super happy to you know be doing this with him and i think that's one of the best uh, uh you know uh things that at least at a you know as an industry in india we have people who are leading those initiatives who are taking it forward and um, you know i think that is the culmination of the mushroom revolution in a general yeah. sense because um, like i said it's one angle of it is cultivation but there is so much where we can do with it and that's each of those little threads becomes such a much such a bigger um, you know industry as such so and the best part about this whole mycology or mushroom or fungi space is that most of the innovations or most of the amazing work that has been done is been done by amateurs and people who have no professional background and uh, it's it's just something that you know it's super accessible to anybody who wants to come into the space and we hope to inspire some people in the process maybe who can take this up more uh, seriously we had uh, one of our teammates joined by mistake so i think there is definitely some technical difficulties from his side we just tested it out with a uh, Our team. connection seems so to be fine. So our connection seems to be fine. It just, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sharad. I guess maybe you'll have to switch to data or you know, you know to Wi-Fi. And if this is, you know, maybe if you want, we could definitely do the. Uh, you want to take it to another day? Or... No, let's just give it one more shot, shot? and if okay. it doesn't work out, because we already have so many people who are like. Yeah, you know, I know. Online. So although you know, uh, Sharad joining would have been a wonderful thing, but let's just give us maybe five to ten more minutes, and if he doesn't join. uh we'll definitely do this one more time uh um, hi ella nice to see you hello uh so yeah uh, you were saying about the events and you know yeah we met a lot of people who had a lot of interest in different different parts of this space and micro materials was this question that we we were seeing from different different people that like it seems to be a super uh fascinating space for a lot of people to take up but they don't know where to start because it's not very approachable and that's why we are doing this live so that we can simplify things tell people where they can start experimenting because most of the ip and things like that in this space have been done with by, the help of uh you know common people like exactly. you and me who don't have a background in uh, mycology so to give you some context in fact a lot of the innovations that did come about in the mycology space both from uh, you know from production side as yeah, well mostly from a cultivation angle cultivation angle came from amateur mycologists like you and me and i think that that's where um, you know uh, that is where the real crux comes because we're not we're not trained to, to look at it a certain way and we have the adaptability to see it through new lenses and um, i think almost everybody calls themselves rad, you know amateur mycologist rather than say we are trained or you know uh, because creativity really comes from there yeah, and just take a look at china china is the world's largest manufacturer of mushrooms manufacturer and consumer of mushrooms where did, how did they get there so china has been credited with like the synthetic log cultivation which is like basically using sawdust inside bags and how did they reach there they reached there because they didn't have anything else to use they were desperate they needed to make money and like it's it's something that you know that's not happening in india because we are taking and digesting all the information that's been given to us from uh, universities and that's not the way and through new edo we hope to build this community keep as much information open source we can't say we are completely altruistic because this is our bread and butter and there are some secrets that all of us do have to keep the same way that sharad will not divulge his formula for the substrate or some parameters because that's ip and that's what enables us to survive in this space and make some money and keep doing these activities so having open source is really good 
and it is something that is the need of the hour and that we have to do oh, oh yes good to see you finally, 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 finally. my wow. apologies i think it was my wifi i had to turn it off and yeah, turn it yeah, on yeah 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 it's better to be on wifi rather than on the i i i, I can't yeah, yeah, show that yeah. but good to have you <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and finally, so, my apologies yeah, to yeah. everybody who was in the field and waited for us to like join back. Fine, yeah. Awesome, awesome, great. So let's so, let's uh, carry on the conversation. Yes. Let's uh, probably you know uh, I think there are a couple of questions, questions that, that people have. Yeah, and I, I tried yeah, to answer yeah, it, but yeah. I think this was mostly your forte. So one of the sure. questions is, what's the hype and what's real in micro materials? Okay, that's 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 actually a tricky question for me to uh, answer because uh, on the outside, like there is a lot of hype about this. We see it, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype generated by Western companies who have pioneered this in West. Uh, and but when it comes to actual transition in the market, we don't see a lot of sustainable packaging based out of mycelium either available even in the West. There's very few companies who are transitioning to this, and th- that's because there are certain challenges to this. Uh, see, the material that we're trying to replace is styrofoam, it expanded polyesterine, which is very number one cheap to manufacture, and number two, it is very quick to be manufactured. So we can churn out a lot of units of thermocol-based packaging, corners, uh, grooves. in uh, you know in and, and using a small amount of plastic raw material right. now right. what we are doing is we're growing that material so that takes time so number one the material you're trying to replace it can be manufactured very quickly but our material takes a lot of time to grow uh number two we have to all, also for me for us to be able to replace it in the market see sustainability is all well and good till the customer does not have to pay for the cost of sustainability right so so one of the very big challenges is to bring down the uh, cost of manufacturing this uh, to a level that is very close to thermocol so that companies are not hesitating to switch over to a sustainable material because nobody wants to do it at a economical cost right and and it should be i mean we are at such a stage with technology where uh, you know we shouldn't compromise we shouldn't like switch to uh, expensive materials just because they are sustainable they, they also have to make sense economically because only then can the material be sustainable a story that you are not able to achieve scale because like there's not so much demand and only if at scale it becomes cheaper you think it's a chicken and egg story no 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 so so it's not the demand that is the problem so we are already working with some of the biggest brands in india who want to switch to sustainable packaging but the challenge is to uh, scale uh, lab based processes so we are working to right. number one right. reduce our grow time so that we can compete with eps there that our turnaround time for a product should come down from so currently it's about 2 to 3 weeks we plan to bring it down to 1 week yeah. and at the same time we're always looking for cheaper and cheaper processes and raw materials so that we can bring down the cost uh, significantly to uh, uh, economical value which is very close to uh, thermocol so demand is not at all a challenge it's our ability to scale those processes up quickly and to be able to meet those demands at that economical value which is which the market is ready to give uh, so, so that's the main that challenge the materials that you know that you're using and perhaps you know are they different from what is traditionally Used like in the west. west and maybe shed some yes, light absolutely. on the indian see, see uh, the west has a completely different food palate to right. indians and so their agricultural crops are also very different from ours and when it come when we talk about sustainable materials i don't want to ship something from us just because it is doing well on a method that they have developed so it's very important to use the locally available agricultural uh, waste material 
and that's where a lot of r and d comes in that's where you have to uh, try and work with different combination of agri waste along with industrial waste different combinations of fungi also you have to try different strains of fungi and which one are uh, responding best to the uh, choice of substrate that we have here so instead of cut copying a model that okay this these guys are growing it on this let's just grow this on so so for you said innovative grows a lot of its material on hemp fibers right but right. hemp right. fiber is it a very uh, accessible raw material in india Right. and the raw material which is also problematic is rice stubble or paddy straw which right. is can't be fed to animals which can't really be composted or at least not be composted by the farmer it's being burned currently and a lot of that log carbon is going into the atmosphere <laughs> so our our mission is not just to create micro materials it is to utilize these waste streams which are creating a problem environmental issue and then incorporating them in our model of uh, manufacturing such materials that we do both things at the same time so two birds with the same stone um, so that's where a lot of r and d and research goes in so it's very very uh, and and anybody who is uh, you know getting into uh, micro materials it's important to utilize the local uh, waste uh, not not waste my... from 300 km 400 km away that again has a carbon footprint when it needs to be carried to your facility and so yeah. you're probably creating the same amount of uh, you know carbon that you're trying to that's i don't consider that very sustainable right. so our approach has been very much targeted to let's solve the agri waste problem and number 2 is let's make useful material from it so we are not just a, a, you know so th- there are multiple application micro materials is just one of them uh, there's also we can make cornstarch bacterial cellulose these are all bio materials that can currently substitute one form of plastic or the other So, so one of the that, th- that's the that's the core aim of uh, Dharaksh. Yeah, one of the things that I find common in what you said is it's the same thing with cultivation. You have all these synthetic filter yeah. patch guys. I think we had this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And all Absolutely. these yeah. the technology that they use, and then you come here and you're like, okay, where's the hardwood fire pellets, dude? Right, you know? right, 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 right. Right, so it's that's what I'm saying for uh, any any mushroom farmer also. it's it's so important to i mean sure uh, you're growing mushrooms and it's a business and you want to maximize your yields and everything but at the end of the day i, I see them as these tools to uh, you know uh, bring back uh, unlock potential from these raw waste sources which are locally available so any mushroom farmer should also look at what's around me what what is around me could it could be food which could be just growing mushrooms or them or it could be you know making a material out of it so whatever it is it is it's very important for anybody who is working in sustainability business to actually see if your your uh, you know you're doing your processes sustainably uh, so yeah local procurement of uh, local organic waste is something that i i i always uh put a top priority like uh, you know from hari he said have you come up with a success formula success formula i don't know what that is because we are we are working with the some of the biggest companies in india from food fmcg havels dabar uh, we are prototyping them we are we are trying to understand so so usually uh this is a long process where we go through where our prototyping uh material goes through a stage of testing so there right. is a shelf testing where these materials are tested for stability for long duration 6 to 11 months uh there's transit testing so these are tested on transit so to see if the goods that they'll be packaging do not get destroyed or the packaging material doesn't get destroyed when they are 
uh, being transported from one location to another. So there are these bunch of these tests, and we we are working with them, taking their feedback in, trying to incorporate that feedback into our R and D, improve the material. So I I would say like we are uh, we are a huge success yet, but like I don't really have a picture for success. Like what is success? I mean, define it to me, and I'll tell you if I'm there or not. But uh, but yeah, so we are we are in the process of. uh perfecting this material and uh, there is a lot of demand like i said a lot of companies are working with us for from electronics to food so we are testing it on different kind of products different markets and uh, hopefully hopefully sometime uh june next year you will actually see products which will be packaged in our amazing and uh, amazing big brands yeah. hopefully the focus time stage and like getting you know feedback and i think that that in itself is an immense learning yeah, and we've come job. a long way i think yeah even- yes. see because because for industry also this is very new this is a new material and they can't just switch their uh, existing uh, you know which which they're fine with plastics don't go bad they know they've done transit testing there's no need to do test a new material but when you are talking about a company like dabar trying to switch a million units of their uh, product to uh, from a non thermocol based to a bio based yeah, uh, this thing they need right. to do a lot of testing as well so that their product doesn't go bad um, so it's a lot of like sure. their reputation on the line so they need the material to be as close to thermocol as possible, as possible. and that's yeah. that's a long process it it's a lot of to and fro we keep giving them new uh, prototypes for them to try out they come back with uh, their feedback and we are try we're always trying to get uh, make it better and better we uh, have two we questions we have two questions and i thought maybe we can just take yeah. two of them they're quite interesting yeah, uh, yeah, shenoy sure. might just says um can fungi ta- fungal, fungal taxonomy, taxonomy help in selection of fungi from yeah. for mycomaterial for mycomaterial research that's that's a interesting uh, that's a interesting thing because i uh, what so my i'll just tell you a small story my actual uh, you know my actual research with biomaterial started when i but i wasn't even looking at them from a bio resource standpoint i was trying to grow ganoderma mushroom it's this mushroom right uh yeah so this this sample by the way is like about 15 15 month old and it okay. hasn't gone bad if you can see it's, it's still in right. uh, very good shape so uh, so we me and another friend we were working and we were just trying to like fruit as many different kind of fungi as we could so we were working with cordyceps we were working with reishi we were working with oysters and uh, while growing these materials once we were harvesting the material and whatever the whatever was left of it the substrate uh for certain species it got really really hard it got really i mean it was impossible to break down because we were after we were done fruiting the blocks our plan was to compost them just dump them in a pit but right. when we tried to break them it, it was so difficult to do it so that's where this idea came that maybe we can you know utilize certain strains of fungi to uh, make more flexible material more make harder materials so that's 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 always there like uh, i'm always looking for like different strains and to this day uh very recently um so and myco community is so nice so cl- well laid so uh, people always keep finding mushrooms and sending me photos and asking me what what they are and sometimes i i find mushrooms that i've been looking for a long time so there's there's a species of ganoderma that i was looking to work with for a long time and some uh, a friend of mine was kind enough to like post a picture with that cog can i said hey can i get a piece of it and uh, it's amazing that she did uh, geo tag the location of that fruit so i was wow. like i am driving there today i got the sample got it down and uh, so we've tested and 
this is this is that uh strain wow that's how, so how different strains uh give different so, finish yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i can see that so they so this is where it, uh lot of research comes in where i just collect a lot of strains and try working with dif- different uh strains and see what kind of texture right right Tech- what kind of texture what kind of you know the uh, fire resistance and all these things they bring and then we choose these strains for different substrates some mm-hmm. strains might do well on say rice straw some will do well on wheat straw right. but right. that doesn't mean that like, so yeah so that's we are making a repository um keeping a record of this uh, you know interaction between different types of mycelium with different types of agri waste yeah and seeing what we are getting and basically cataloging all this and uh, hopefully so what is the parameters uh, we'll like to... when you compare between strains when you comparing between strains like you said strains or even species like right. what are the parameters that you would look at to call something like a suitable uh, culture company. like suitable fungus to right grow. right 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 excellent question so so say you go out for age go go out in the woods and you see a bunch of mushrooms right how to know which mushroom would be ideal to actually get started with the bio material is it even eligible for to be exactly. selected so number one uh, thing i go look at is what the mushroom is growing on is it growing right. from the soil because if it's growing from the soil it probably is not going to be having a lot of uh, ability to digest uh, cellulose and lignase and uh, hemicellulose which are primarily what your agri waste is made of so number one we i'm going to look for mushrooms which are growing on wood or right. probably grass or uh, you know pine needles things like that number two i'm going to look for something like the texture of the mushroom is it hard right is it does it last a long time so ganoderma uh, turkey tail these mushrooms if you go out in the woods you'll find them really late in the season as well way past the mushroom season got it uh, that that's not normal because most mushrooms disappear so this is the quality of fungi mushrooms are actually just reproductive bodies of the fungi so once they're done dispersing the spore the fungi stops uh, supporting the fruits with enzymatic uh, and bio compounds which can defend itself so most fungi degrade and fall away and disappear you won't find them you'll find them only for a small window but ganoderma uh, species from cramitis genus uh, fomes genus i have even heard that they are a good species to work with like xyleria yes 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 xyleria is another so so these so so if you look at the texture this way hardy right so that's one place to start that if the mushroom is hard then the mycelium is also going to have some properties which are ultimately a culmination in the fruiting body so right. that's one place to start and then I, a lot of it is just trial and error i, I you know there sometimes uh species that i thought would do very well uh on but i haven't been able to get very good success on uh the agri mix that i am trying so i keep collecting different fungi and experimenting with like different uh agri ways to see what what works out but that 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 one place to start so there yeah, there's two more questions one is what are the other areas where micro materials can be used there stages right so so my, so i am i have just been talking about uh, replacement for thermocol or eps or puf but uh, micro materials can be in many different forms they can be com- foam foamy forms which can replace plastic uh, layers or bags or uh, air bubbles those pa- packaging then there is leather like materials uh which the which it could replace so uh so that's that and uh, then there are films biofilms that you can make out of fungi which have different applications we can replace plastic bags with it 
Uh, yeah, I, I have heard of people uh, embedding graphite particles inside uh, what do you say matrices to make like yes, some yes, conductor. Yes, like yes, yes. So there, there, there's actually there's actually a very good uh, research going on uh, where <clears throat> so fungi are essentially mycelium is essentially water and uh, ions nutrients which are being transported right. from one end of the mycelium to the other. right so they're already transporting a lot of electrons and protons in this process of moving nutrient from one end to the other so uh, so scientists have been trying to see if we can grow uh, semiconductor boards just we can inoculate different points with different nutritional source and let the mycelium run through it and see how what happens to the electrical conductivity and trying to measure this so it's it, it's a rather cool thing but the thing with mycelium is after a certain point it's difficult to control its growth and it kind of keeps growing wherever it wants to grow so so it's 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 also a work in progress but it's very interesting to see that uh, in future there could be applications in the electronics and semiconductors where we could do fungi to yeah because uh, this is a this is actually a challenge to uh, Pro- semi uh, semiconductors and microprocessors are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and so you need really really precise uh, uh, you know ways to lay down these electrical uh, circuits and one way to do it is to have microorganisms do this because they're already small they're able to yeah but there's a lot of work to be done in there but there's so many things like fungi fungi blew, blew my mind the number of applications that and it's only very recently that we've started looking at uh, fungi from a resource standpoint because for a so long there, time there's a really the, interesting question fungi as a yeah as a food source or as you know something to be worried about something to be scared because you could get a disease or something but it's yeah. great that we're looking at all these microorganisms as a resource and as companions rather than something that we need to be worried and fighting against something absolutely so yeah, a super yeah. nice question i think both of us can nerd out to this this is like again by belle like belle has been putting out a lot of super cool questions out there today so it's basically he says uh, maybe we can yeah. develop a gene marker that hints at micro material potential of fungi <laughs> is there a marker that we can develop which can tell yes 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 definitely that's that's something that we are also planning to uh, do not only that but uh, we're also trying to basically uh, find uh, how we can you know improve properties of mycelium through uh, genetic modification so can we get can we get mycelium that can bind better can we get mycelium that is much more foamier can we get mycelium which is uh, much which doesn't uh, di- discolor over time so so there's so many things and uh, somebody should look at it we are also planning to look at it but right now we're not uh, working on the uh, genetic mani- manipulation of uh, strains and fungi but yes we are we are trying to uh, train these uh, strains that we have to to be able to you know work on more diverse agri waste so uh, so that you know we will we'll have something very but yeah definitely it can be done and uh, already people are looking at it working on it so the why we are having this talk that there is so much work to be done yeah. and like there's this handful of us here you know yeah, we need yeah, yeah. so much work this- Yes, yeah, so, so I I I look at the mushroom space and mycology space in the very uh, like it's it's at the cusp, right? Uh, so it's almost at the stage of where Mendeleev was crossing peas in his garden. So right, right, right. mycologists are mycologists a group of uh, I think it's the biggest group of citizen scientists. Most people working in this field yeah. Yeah. are doing things by themselves. so everybody is kind of like mentally crossing peas and seeing what happens and 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 so much information is being shared freely that hey i took this fungi and i observed this this is very strange what do you think about this right. and we're bouncing off ideas with each other so 
So yeah, dude, there's so much work to be done, and it's amazing that uh, it's amazing to be in this because so there's so many questions. With other other, you usually have a lot of this figured out, and you have answers that you can Google and just get. But with mycology, there's so much to be found out. There's so much to be found out that I feel like there's not enough people who are uh, working to like find answers to these complex questions that we have. began we said you know um, all of us here are in our own, like most of the tech that has been developed in the last maybe 20 odd years in the west or was developed by, by amateurs yeah and in this growing need and so, that's why it's one of the most it's it's one of the strongest communities also online uh, there's plenty of people to help you out with any question most of the knowledge at least to a certain level is open source people have published their text that this is how you grow this this is how you do this this is how you make leather this is how you make material so it's really really i mean it's great that uh, we have a community which is open to sharing uh, information uh, because this day and age you see a lot of other areas people are very uh, you know trying to change silos sort of sit on the information they have and not let it out But and with I think that also the problem with the uh, really... Indian, it's a problem with the Indian micro scene as well because there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of great information that can benefit many others, but they feel like they're the only ones who should have it. And I think there, both there'll, of us. There'll always be like there'll always be some people, right? But my my personal experience, like largely the community is very very open and supportive. So uh, yeah, that, but there'll always be people who think. What I know, right. nobody else knows, and nobody else should know. So Absolutely. yeah, I'm right, not right. like that though. That's amazing. So we've got a re- another question, which uh, I think was asked by Hari. Uh, he says right. that could microelectrical circuits survive in an age of nanotechnology? I quite uh, like that point. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure yet because see, we don't currently have any micro. Uh, Okay. You know, so, semiconductors or IC uh, boards. Yet, it's 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 a research area that is open, and uh, so I'm I'm not sure if uh, it will be made. It's it's a good idea to look at it, explore, see what comes out of it. But I don't know if it will survive or it will make it or if it will. You know, uh, that that's a question for future. Maybe five years down the line, we can answer that question. So yeah, that brings us to one of the questions that I had. Since a lot of the people who have tuned into this have absolutely no background in growing mushrooms or like anything related to mycology, have probably just eaten button mushrooms, but they want to try this. Where would be like a good place to start? Can they use like one of our growing kits for this, or like what? Right. What do you think is a good idea? Absolutely, one of one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So, uh, so like people are already already buying these kits and growing mushrooms, right? But what happens afterwards is that most likely they're composting this material in a, right. uh, which is all well and good because this is as fine a compost as you're gonna get for your plants. Plants love this, uh, but what you can do. other than that is say if you have a mold or a shape in mind right so you can you can basically make it out of a plastic or foil wash that soap wash that uh, with soap and bleach 10% bleach solution then break down the substrate which is spent substrate add 10% water to the weight of uh, the material Material. And some flour to it, some flour. Right. So it could be wheat flour, it could be corn flour, it could be any kind of flour. And then, and then leave, put this in the mold, and cover this up. And then just leave it in a slightly high humidity and, uh, you know, the same environment that you would want when you're fruiting the mushroom. Yeah. Leave it yeah. there for a week to two weeks. The mushroom, the mycelium will regrow. it will regrow mm-hmm. around the mold in that shape and okay. after two weeks you can you can dry that mold entirely and then remove it and you'll have a dry material that you can use as a lamp shade or as That's a pot right 
Like wow, guys! Pod. Please have a look at that. That so, that looks so and nice. Th- yeah, this brings us to a really interesting yeah. part of the conversation. Something that Sharad yeah, and I have been made, like planning or talking about for a while. Yeah. So, wow. so this one, this one, and going, and going. So yeah, this, so they can hundred percent use one of the kits that uh, they're buying off Novedo once they're done fruiting the uh, spend blocks. In fact, I have a small write up about this. I'll share it with uh, you, and you can maybe post a link. People can go to that write up and uh, get a better idea on what to do, what temperature to bake it at. Before that, Jasha, before you get to that, I just wanted to take this question because I thought it was very interesting. Um, Advait sure. Pillai says that can you envision small and medium scale enterprises entering the mi- micro space, and can these technologies be inclusive and not just it's limited to, limited large, to large, large scale factories? Yes, 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 yes. So see, at Dharaksh, one of our we are targeting multiple pain points that we want to uh, solve when it comes to sustainable materials, and one of them is that. how do we make this scalable because uh, you know if if it's if it's something that not everybody can do then it'll be one company sitting in delhi utilizing some small percentage of raw material and then making materials out of it but it's not going to like create a huge impact or huge change right uh, so one what we're currently working on is basically minimizing the cost and technology uh, use in making micro material so we are trying to develop low cost processes for steps like sterilization which is a step when you you have to sterilize the uh, waste raw material before inoculating it with fungi that is the expensive and energy taking step consumes time so we are trying to lower all that time down so that we can have a basically we can have a, a set of sops and yeah. that we can then maybe license out to small players say ki look do it for this we have this this is processes these processes can be done with these 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 low cost technologies and then we can train people at the source of production so we want our units to be placed uh, to be run by communities small communities of villagers farmers Who are basically producing right, right now? Right now, they're basically not uh, processing that waste because it costs them money to uh, process it. And number two, they don't get anything out of it. So right. once they understand that this is a resource which can also be an additional income other than the farm income they're going to make from their agricultural produce. Right. Uh, hopefully that. once we have that we're planning we're definitely planning to make it more scalable and uh, reduce the cost of producing this so that it's more scalable there's less uh, technology involved uh, layman can be uh, you know employed in a plant where uh, this can be made right so that's that's one of the that's one of our core agendas at dharaksh uh, we license not Have it very expensive and make it, uh, you know, uh, hub and spoke model where we can have different hubs around India catering to different parts of uh, manufacturing centers. So Delhi, Delhi different right. uh, uh, set of you know production units. East can have a different uh, so decentralized and run locally. That's 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 one of our uh, core goals. and that's wonderful because i think that if we really adopt this model across a lot of the things in the mushroom space i mean that's right, the only right, way right. to thrive you know right, uh, there's so many so many so many oyster farmers in india so many of them they're farming but they're just getting rid of the spent substrates so we're yes. planning we're, we're coming out with different uh, you know we're working with different prototypes how we can utilize that train those guys utilize their facility space which they already have to make these micro materials which are which then improve their uh, you know economic output from the same uh, work so yeah that's that's one of the core focus 
So yeah, for all the people who are listening in, we have a small surprise, which is that Sharad and I, and Sharad and Yuvedo, basically we'll be doing a free webinar and maybe a couple of workshops in the coming months. So stay tuned. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of exciting stuff that we are going to be collaborating on, and hopefully a in-person workshop also if this whole Corona situation, you know, is looks looks fine. Looks fine. But like a lot of interesting things coming in the micro material space, and we're super happy that Sharad. uh wants to be part of this and wants to support the community and you know do events around this so guys stay tuned for that we will be coming out like real soon and uh, so watch out yeah yeah in fact yeah, um, excited for that nice. yeah i think and then and this is the like i mean if you know like multiple people start doing this on a such a small scale that's the way we can actually create that wave of you know adoption slowly slowly Absolutely. i i don't i don't think only like only dharaksh needs because i think i think everybody should look at it every everybody is working with fungi growing mushrooms uh bio material is not very different from growing mushrooms it's not it really is not the, and and you're only only limited by the molds because any farmer any mushroom farmer is already growing bio material right yeah, if yeah. he is growing bio material past the stage where it needs to be grown it, it, they they take it to the fruiting stage and then discard the material so there's lot of scope in uh, you know just educating people getting them involved having these small workshops and uh, that's that's also how uh, you know brands will also uh, get in on uh, you know uh, this wave of sustainable material and uh, utilizing sustainable materials in their packaging oh, sure. yeah. so yeah i think we've been we've like overshot our time and this is a what was supposed to be like a half an hour discussion is yeah. like gone on for yeah, like yeah. a long time i mean i was hoping my apologies that... for my apologies for the interruption and uh, my in no, some no, no. voice Right. So it's totally fine. Yeah. So these are again things that we'll have to face while we're doing this. And next time, of course, when the webinar is happening, we'll probably be on Zoom or Google Meet. And this confusion. Yeah, hopefully, be. yeah. Instagram is like really, really. I, I have no idea how this. So for everyone I'm, who's listening and, and they want to watch, yeah, and this it sounded exciting. exciting, and it seems like something that you know you want to do, and maybe as a hobby, maybe as something serious. Just DM, DM us. Let us know. Know that you're interested in. you know pursuing micro material so we can add you to our mailing list and keep you informed on the right. event because like our events are like getting filled in less than 20 for the day like by the time i opened my google forms it, like within 12 hours we had like so many requests and we had to turn down so many people i'm so sorry so please stay in touch with us so that you know we can keep you informed and you can attend these workshops and you know it, be part of the scene So thank you so much Sharad for like joining us and uh, thank you Aaron. Yeah and let's this looking forward super, to more yeah looking forward to more citizen science talks and citizen you know science. taking this amateur mycology Absolutely. space to next level in India more, more power to you more power to Dharaksh and looking forward to seeing you soon in Bangalore maybe we can do a live once you're here So okay. have a good night. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Amazing questions. Uh, and some blast. really, in fact, we couldn't take all the questions. There were like a lot, but um, maybe yeah, I know. I, I was actually just scrolling through the questions, and there are a lot of questions. Hopefully, yeah. I'll take time and answer them. Uh, I am maybe they can DM me, or yeah. I can, you know, if, I, if I'm not able to answer those questions here, I can answer them later. have any doubts and and you know there's a lot of questions on ganoderma and i think you know that was like a yeah like, i know yeah. yeah yeah i i can take them on on dm and um i'll share the link to my write up and maybe you guys can share it yeah, through share it through us we will definitely yeah. do that yeah. so guys whoever right. is please dm us with your email so we can share all the material with you and thank you so much again for tuning in uh as we have said you way though you must say, say. <laughs> good night good night much love, guys. Much love. bye good night good night